Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> I'm Zain al Abidin Bakir from the Center for Religious and Cross-Cultural Studies at um, Gajah Mada University. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, At America <coughs> um, to give us this opportunity. This is the first screening, um, first public screening of um, our film. Um <coughs> and I'm also um, happy. Um, actually, I was a bit surprised that um <coughs> The title here is The Road to Our Ocean Conference. So this this is um, a film about ocean, yes, but initially actually we didn't think about this film as a film about ocean. <coughs> we think about this film um, as a film, uh, well, the big, the title of the big project that um, we are doing is Voicing Diversity. So it's more about um, diversity, cultural diversity, religious diversity, um, <coughs> but then, yeah, we can see that um, anytime we speak about culture, about religion, especially in Indonesia, um, you cannot confine it into one box. <coughs> uh, religion, culture, it's also about uh, many other things. Um, so, <coughs> and that's exactly what we um, try to do at the center um, in UGM. The center is, is um, mostly a master's um, degree um, program <coughs> um, on religious studies, but we understand religion in a broad sense. <coughs> um, so probably now, I mean, if you if you um, focus your attentions to the mass media um, news about religion, mostly it's probably about terrorism, intolerance, radicalism, politics, and others. Um, <coughs> we understand religion mostly as um, lived um, experience. And as lived experience, it's not, like I said, um, it's not confined in, in a particular box, but it um, cross-cut with, with, other, with other things in life. Um, <coughs> so when we um, decide, um, this is our first film. <coughs> um, it will be followed by other films. Um, when um, we had the discussion <coughs> um, with Kelly and others, and then um, made a decision to do this film in the place, the film which um, will you see. <coughs> we know that it's not only about religion. I mean, it's about diversity, culture, religion, etc. cetera. Um, but then also, very interestingly, um, the issue, we found out that the issue about cultural diversity is also very much linked with the issue of um, biodiversity. <coughs> That's partly the topic of this film. And after the film, there will be um, uh, a TEDx video of um, TEDx um, presentations of um, Kelly. <coughs> um, it's from the TEDx Ubud a few months ago, um, which um, speaks about the same issue using um, the, same, um, uh, the same situation of the Bajo community. <coughs> Um, to um, speak about this um, interlink between um, religious and cultural diversity. <coughs> so, um, what else? I think probably that's all I want to say. And um, yeah, um <coughs> I mentioned earlier that um, we hope we will make um, other films around this top topic. Um, the topic of voicing um, diversity, um, cultural diversity, religious diversity. And um, so this is our first try, and I hope it's not um, disappointing. So we would um, very much like to hear your comments afterwards. Um, and I think that's all um, my introduction. Um, without um, further ado, we will see the film, and then after that, um, continued with the um, video of the TEDx um, presentations. Okay, thank you very much.
Bajau itu adalah kebebasan. Sebelum ada Republik Indonesia, sebelum ada batasan di laut, kami hidup bebas. Dengan cara seperti itu, kami bisa hidup sesuai dengan laut dan semua sumber daya alam yang ada di laut. Bahkan saat ini kami sudah melepaskan kehidupan di atas perahu sebagai masyarakat yang nomadik, kami masih tetap tinggal di laut karena laut itu adalah kerajaan kami. Tapi kami tidak mengatur laut, lautlah yang mengatur kehidupan kami. Sekarang kehidupan kami berubah dengan cepat karena ikan sudah hampir habis. Sekarang di mana-mana sudah rusak dan anak-anak kami juga tidak lagi pergi ke laut dan mereka sudah mulai melupakan tradisinya. Karena berhubungan dengan laut dianggap sesuatu yang rendah. Perubahan itu terjadi di depan mata saya. Saya saja yang berumur sekarang 44 melihat perubahan dalam 15 tahun terakhir hanya 15 tahun sangat jauh berbeda saya pernah sekolah sampai SD kelas 6 tapi ekonomi pergi ke sekolah tidak punya uang untuk jajan saya jualan, saya sembunyi jualan saya kasih anak ibu pergi ke laut, dari laut bawa ikan, memasak apa. Tapi saya putuskan tidak mau sekolah lagi. Tapi saya lebih dekat dengan nenek kakek. Saya pernah ikut Bu Ende, Bu Tia, putar pulau, cari ikan, sampai tiga hari. Waktu masih semurang halim. Kita dayung ke sana, putar, kembali. Itu tiga hari tidur di pantai, tidur di perahu. Tapi itu musim teduh, tidak ada ombak. Tapi banyak teman-teman boende yang pergi bawa cucunya. Tapi saya paling suka. Kalau ada orang sakit, apalagi mereka sakit dari laut. Di banyak ke rumah, tidak enak badan, dipanggil kamu boende. Boende sarangkan. Harus mau dua ibu bawa air alkohol ke tengah laut, baru buat dipanggil semuanya tuh yang raja-raja di laut itu untuk buat dikasih alkohol itu satu botol. Haling akan disunat. Islam bilang kalau kita tidak sunat kita tidak jadi Islam harus sunat. Sebelum meninggal kalau ada sunatan buat dia yang dipanggil. Sekarang setelah Mbutia meninggal, tidak ada lagi. Mbutia Mbundi meninggal bawa ilmu. Tidak ada yang ambil ilmu. Saya masih ingat waktu kecil, ibu saya itu masih punya apa kepercayaan dengan tradisi bajo dan bapak seorang muslim. Kampung itu kecil, tapi Hampir mayoritas orang masih praktis dengan adat istiadat orang Bajo. Tapi bapak saya lebih, lebih, ya dia, dia muslim. Mengajar kami mengaji, mengajar ajaran-ajaran tentang Islam. Orang Bajo di Indonesia, saya boleh bilang 100% mereka mengaku muslim. Tapi... Masih ada kepercayaan bajo di dalam masyarakat itu. Semua orang bajo berkembaran dengan gurita. Jadi orang tidak tahu di mana binatang kembar saya. ya. Tapi kalau mereka menombak gurita dan tiba-tiba sakit, berarti dia, dia seperti menembak kembaran dia.
dan harus dibuat upacara ritual lagi. Ada orang Bajo yang sangat percaya dengan tradisi, dengan upacara-upacara tradisi mereka. Saya Islam, tapi saya tidak terlalu praktek sebagai seorang Muslim. Istri saya masih sangat kental, dia orang Bajo. Dan ya, saya bilang anak-anak harus tumbuh sendiri dengan ini. Jangan hanya percaya kepada Islam saja, biasakan mereka dengan siapa dirinya, dia orang Bajo. Kakek uh, almarhum dan adalah Sandro, nenek juga. Mereka adalah pewaris tradisi yang baju yang sebenarnya. Dan kemudian mereka juga sholat. Yang terjadi di, di tradisi suku baju, bahwa mereka melihat Aruh-aruh itu juga sebagai tandingan-tandingan Allah. Jadi di dalam Islam ini tidak boleh. Ini kalau bahasa Islam itu dia menyebut musrik. Percaya kepada selain Tuhan. Saya sudah memeluk Islam itu dan mengerti tentang perintah dan larangan di dalam. Sejak kuliah, sudah tidak lagi mengikuti tradisi e, ibu saya disampaikan. Bikin tradisi kakak, tuli, saya, saya tidak lakukan. Sama Bahari masih mewarisi cerita-cerita yang lama. Belum mau berubah. Mungkin bahasa anak muda yang orang Makassar mungkin belum move on. Dari mereka tidak ada perubahan-perubahan yang, yang uh, bisa dianggap, mungkin mereka anggap modern. Aran jika aran jika ini nabi ini. Kemudian aku mulai kemudian diambil diambil dari mana untuk menjinakkan tubuh kita dari. Ibu aku buat ini, boleh mengingin tak tang la la rambut na, la la tingkat untuk binata, la tingkat untuk manusia. Setelah ini minta ke siapa mau pasar. Setelah itu solon ni dia ngoyak ni tay nak kang solon ni. Hingga mereka dapat tay. Jadi masalah mo hingga mereka dapat tay boleh ni buat rayu, buat janggo, buat tanjir, buat rumah, buat rumah. Kalau tahu dalam sana itu panul, panul, panul teh. Memang nak membuka tali bawah memang sama sekali bah. Pukul na alat neka pulian na alat neka hiratan na alat persembahan terlalu dambu. Pukul na sa 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 apa lagi aktual aktual diri ter. Bisa sama sekali bah mandi tali bawah memang limui. Makanya buku puan suruh lubang aku sekolah aku jalan ni aku tuntut nama dulu manusia kampu. Bung kalau gina sih, kalau kena tentangan, saya ingin buat tentangan. Ada dua ke agama Islam, sekolah ada dua. Karena kita cuma ada dua pada bahagian itu, minta nama dia jadi. Kalau aku melihat dia jadi kita kerja ke sana. Aku mau dia, asminya aku. Jadi pada arus merumah persenatan. Ia buat jadi aku jadi memang cerai saya mahu memasang kita macam tu antara kita itu macam tu. Betara itu lah. Enggak kuli nanya aku tangan. Saya jadi pemimpin acara. Saya yang urus ini, urus urus beng, urus makanan. Banyak yang mau ikut di samping, mungkin 30 orang. Itu ramai sekali. Satu kampung pesta. Kita harus beli makanan banyak sekali. Sedikit pusing. Banyak orang bertanya ini, ini. 
Tapi orang sampila membantu juga. Jarang paguruan tak membuat tiangnya aku. Kata nanti ngeragi. Enggak, jarang si bayi enggak jangan tena ngeragi. Bukan saja ia iru sangat nisa paguruan tak. Ia berjara nambah riru ni, nambah manusia ma bahat ni, manusia ma. Nyo, dah bulu ni. Jara nambah tiru ni sana. Ini aku jara iru paguruan, tapi kita dampak tahu betul ke? Kita marah ni yang dia nak tua. Gek, kita sadar nak tua, nak mata ya. Sadar aku nak mata ya. Itu sisa lah kita. Bu sisa ni, panjun nak nak tidak nak kasih diri ni. Pong ang gantang ang buas na ilmu na ilmu na tidak ngatih ilmu na tidak ngasih guru anak tau baca baca membundi isa isa guru anakku bungi nai alih masa sekolah kerja tengah ke sekolah sa guru kita kira kita guru anak tengah itu guru saatnya guru Saya mulai-mulai ke sini itu sejak dari tahun 1975 karena petugas agama di sini tidak ada. Saya orang Binongko tapi kasihan, saya kasihan ini. Jadi kebutuhan syariat agama apapun dilaksanakan oleh masyarakat harus cari orang darat dengan budaya yang berbeza. Ini yang menjadi masalah bagi sama bahari. Tradisinya di sini bukan main. Di sini buktikan, mabok-mabokan, buktikan dia tidak masalah. Situ saya masuk. Karena ya tradisi orang tua dulu masih ada. Kalau sudah duduk dua tiga orang kecuali minum. Itu yang saya basmi pelan 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 pelan. Saya cipta anak anak di masjid, kasih mengaji apa segala pengertian agama. Saya kasih sekolah agama. Saya kasih masuk di sana via. Sekarang ini sudah ada SMP-nya, sudah ada SMA-nya, ada madrasanya, ada SD-nya. Alhamdulillah sekarang sudah sarjana agama semua. Begitulah jalan sejarah dari pada sampai hari ini sampai saya juga turun tinggal rumah saya saya tinggalkan. Karena kalau kita hanya satu satu jam di sini, bagaimana mau terjamin dia sampai lebih besar dengan kakak yang empat ratus orang lebih dengan adanya saya bimbing anak-anak ini remaja ini. Hanya orang tua mengikut anak remaja. Remaja saya punya anak buah semua di masjid. Tapi sekarang biar bajo dia sudah ikut tidara. Masalah hitan apa segala itu sudah ikut tidara. Jadi ada ada perbedaan tapi hanya sedikit sedikit sudah tidak ada tidak kentar lagi. Di darat sekolahnya sudah bagus dan di situ tentang agama. Jadi saya memilih untuk di darat. Mungkin saya sudah belajar di sana, Wia. Dan saya belajar ilmu agama, jadi tidak terlalu percaya Sandro. Menurut yang saya dengar di sana, jika yang Sandro itu syirik menduakan Allah. begitu. Mungkin Sandro hanya menyuk-nyuk air, tapi itu tidak mungkin menyembuhkan orang. Tapi walaupun begitu, itu sudah tradisi mereka, jadi tidak bisa dilupakan begitu saja. Anak laki-laki ku akan disunat, dan sesudah itu sudah diakui menjadi seseorang yang dewasa. Tapi aku belum tahu apa itu bajau dewasa, kalau tidak berhubungan lagi dengan laut. Perubahan iklim untuk di kawasan ini sudah 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 terjadi. Ada banyak sumber daya yang menjadi harapan besar untuk orang baju bertahan hidup. Tiba-tiba ketersediaannya sudah tidak cukup lagi. Dulu ikan masih banyak. Lokasi-lokasi yang tempat biasa untuk 
menjaring itu lebih banyak ikan dibanding dulu itu banyak ikan tapi sekarang harus di tempat jauh sudah kurang dulu pendapatan kita 200 di tahun yang lalu sekarang sudah kurang oh kurang deh hanya itu karena gara kerja kita tamu iya lagi maka bagai na, maka mau buku na, ama buku na mami aya. Di sekitar sini, karena tiap hari, tiap hari di jaring atau mancing atau di bom, pakai bius yang paling mempengaruhi adalah aktivitas, aktivitas uh, manusia yang ada sebagian yang yang sedikit tidak bagus merusak lagu pertambahan ini lagu tambah dah ya jadi daya jalan ada membuiu mereka jalan kita membuiu kan ngalah daya tu daya jutaan dari rumah aku nama hati nama malaku yang di bulan nak aku kan dan pakulun dulu mak kita jadi tanah karamba kita tidak juga seperti dulu perubahan apa perubahan cuaca tidak bagus mata pencarian di sini tidak bagus lagi jadi anak-anak harus sekolah tidak seperti bapaknya seperti nelayan mungkin di generasi ke depan mereka kalau tidak sanggup lagi mungkin mereka harus mencari pekerjaan di darat dan itu menyedihkan mereka tidak seperti bukan orang bajo lagi kenapa sama bahari harus berbeda dengan yang lain sama bahari juga punya orang yang bisa berkompetensi dengan tidak ada beda dengan dengan yang lain justru kita sama bahari kalau mau ber, berusaha bisa menyaingi mereka menurut saya ini, ini adalah pilihan uh, keinginan masyarakat untuk lebih mendapatkan hasil lebih banyak. Tinggal mereka adaptasi. Senatan, senatan yang paling besar. Jadi saya juga agak bingung dulu, agak bingung karena kami di sana juga begitu, tapi tidak begitu lama. Tapi mereka di sini ya nur lama. Acaranya itu. Buka main. Itu senatan bukan untuk hanya anak-anak, itu senatan untuk orang satu kampung. Dan orang kampung semuanya senang. Ini tradisi dari nenek-nenek moyang yang turun temurun sampai sekarang. Bukan juga eh menduakan Tuhan bukan. Eh kata mereka yang anu agamanya itu dia ada bilang menduakan agak menduakan Tuhan tapi tidak. Eh kalau kita tidak itu tidak kasih turun adat itu, ada kalanya tu yang anak yang disunat kesakitan harus dipakai tidak boleh tidak.
Buat kita boleh tahaya kerana nilai kangga kita. Kita masih sama, mahu kita nak buat gaya, buat bagi, mahu kita nak buat ngotui, mahu kita nak buat cina, kita sama-sama. Tapi sama kita mahu kumpul dengan mahu yang kita buntang, kita alami sama. Kalau sudah jadi Islam, hal ini harus bertanggung seperti bertanggung jawab, karena dia seperti sudah besar. Harapan untuk Salma dan Ali itu sangat besar sekali, sama dengan Atia. Biar mereka sekolah tinggi, kalau sudah sukses pulang ke Sampila, mereka harus percaya Sandro, karena itu dari nenek moyang. Saya sangat senang sekali lihat Ali tertawa. Stres sudah hilang dan itu bikin saya bangga karena saya bisa bikin upacara besar. Anakku akan jadi orang dewasa yang modern. Tapi apa itu modern? Percaya pada batasan yang sebenarnya tidak ada? Bukan hanya batasan yang memisahkan wilayah saja, tapi juga yang memisahkan agama dari tradisinya. Batasan yang memisahkan leluhur dari keturunannya. Batasan yang memisahkan masyarakat dari alamnya. Kalau batasan yang gaib itu adalah roh dari kepercayaan modern, aku berharap anak-anakku memilih kepercayaan bajo. community of Sampella in Wakatobi National Park in southeast Sulawesi, every child is born a twin. At birth, ritual experts who have overseen the development of a woman's pregnancy deliver both her human child and its twin, the placenta. 
its fibrous form believed to be the child's octopus sibling. After birth, the placenta is returned to its home in the sea, establishing a lifelong relationship between humans and the spirits that inhabit the ocean in the form of marine life. This is the unseen world of the Bajau of Sampella, who call themselves the Sama. Their stories are an example of how biodiversity and cultural diversity are inexorably linked, and how we cannot protect one without defending the other. For the Bajau, the marine environment is not only the source of their sustenance, it's the home of ancestors and animal counterparts that are ever present in their everyday lives and activities. It's also the realm of Bojango, the Sama ancestor, who they recognize as a Quranic figure of knowledge. The wind, the rains, the phases of the moon, the patterns of the waves are a map that the Sama follow back year after year to Bojango's fields below the sea fields that have been utilized by their forebearers for centuries with the permission of their ancestors. The Sama are part of a larger group of seafarers who inhabit the oceans around Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, East Timor, and Papua New Guinea. The Bajau of Southeast Sulawesi have traditionally lived their lives in boats on the ocean and in the mangroves where land and ocean overlap. The Bajau traditional territory corresponds to the Coral Triangle, a six million square kilometer area that contains some of the Earth's most diverse ocean life. This includes 37% of the world's coral reef species and 56% of the fish species found in the Indo-Pacific marine region. Bajau communities are frontline communities witnesses to the impacts that climate change and overfishing have on one of the world's most important and most threatened marine regions. But as the Bajau bear witness, they are also among the most vulnerable to the effects that environmental change have on social, cultural, and economic life around the archipelago. Sama beliefs Rituals and traditions are part of a cosmology of the sea that incorporates their knowledge of the Coral Triangle's marine environment and their practice of Islam. It's based on intimate knowledge of the renewal cycles and habits of marine species that are expressed through spiritual rules about how humans should interact with the ocean and those who inhabit it. It's an ethical system one that governs if and how resources should be used, that parallels contemporary conservation strategies like no-take zones and the selective harvesting of marine species. But the Sama culture that allows them to live sustainably with the sea teeters on the brink of eradication. As a result of government policies and for practical reasons, the Sama established a more sedentary community in Wakatobi National Park in the early 1970s. The shift to a more sedentary lifestyle, along with the effect of evolving resources, um, governing of resources in the National Park, meant that the Sama had to give up many of their nomadic practices that had allowed them to harvest resources from a very wide maritime territory. More integration into neighboring land-based communities also exposed the Sama to prejudice and discrimination against their beliefs, their way of life, and their interpretation of Islam. Government services and policies that directly affect this village and the ocean that surrounds it are largely determined by non Bajau. They see the Sama insistence to remain on the sea and to continue to practice a culture that has arisen from a life lived in that environment as a resistance to the ideals of modern life in Indonesia. 
At the same time, salmonets are coming up emptier every year. The impending collapse of Southeast Asian fisheries due to climate change and overfishing have decimated the marine life around their village. Older generation of Sama interpret this as a sign of Bojango's anger at those Sama fishermen who resorted to destructive fishing practices as the once vast ocean territory that they fished became more and more restricted and there were less and less fish to be had. Today, Sama youth know that they face an uncertain future as it is clear that the ocean can no longer support their community. But if the Baja were to live without the sea, then their culture and the ecological knowledge that it contains can only be maintained if the next generation sees the value in carrying on their traditions. At a time when environmental pressures threaten their existence as people of the sea, policies and prejudices that discriminate against diverse ways of life communicate to Sama youth that they don't have any culture that's worth saving. Conservationists and uh, government officials often have difficulty incorporating the Bajau into their projects because he Bajo believes as a hindrance rather than as a contribution to scientific knowledge. Conservation efforts often focus on changing human behavior in the face of environmental degradation worldwide. It sees cultures as being lost as the environments that shape them are threatened and disappear. Indigenous peoples around the world are beginning to voice their roles as stewards and protectors of particular habitats worldwide. Habitats where human culture has shaped the way that people should interact with and sustain their environments. Nowhere is this more important or more evident than in Indonesia where environmental destruction threatens the nation's resources and diverse communities around the archipelago face discrimination and environmental loss. The key to a sustainable future might be held in the very societies that are losing their homes and their abilities to practice their ways of life. This means that we cannot determine a priori what kind of diversity is good or bad. We have to foster diverse life ways for the potential that they hold for our human public and for the resources that we need to support it. It's time that we see the wisdom of these unseen worlds as a contribution to addressing environmental degradation around the world. As an anthropologist who works for a graduate program that brings together people of diverse regions, religions, and backgrounds in the pursuit of a just and multicultural Indonesia, I believe that the greatest potential that we have to solve our global problems lies not just in recognizing difference or even in tolerating difference, but in valuing diversity as an ever-evolving repository of human innovation imagination, and knowledge. Digital storyteller Matt Colicello and I are making media that aims to elevate the perspectives of people like the Sama, who struggle to have their voices heard and their culture seen as something that's valuable. We're making a film about the Bajau and Wakatobi, not just to talk about the link between biodiversity and cultural diversity, but also to share Sama stories with other young people around Indonesia in the hopes that it will inspire them to see diversity in all of its forms as something that's worth protecting. For me, defending diversity is an ethical orientation. I believe that all of our lives are twin to the unseen world below the sea. As our friend Bajau activist Iskandar says, it is the ocean that determines our lives, not our lives that determine the ocean. Iskandar says, if to give up Bajau life means to live by boundaries that aren't really there, 
not just the boundaries between regions, but boundaries that separate people from their environment, boundaries that separate tradition from religion, then I choose to be Bajau. Even though we have given up our nomadic life on boats, we remain on the sea. Our culture was built from the sea. If you skinned a Bajau, the very core of him would be the sea. The deepest part of him is the sea. Skandar hopes that his children will be able to choose to be Bajau. But he sees his culture and the knowledge that it contains disappearing with the sea life around them. Our ability to join the Sama and other indigenous peoples around the world in resisting this kind of loss lies in our collective efforts to protect diversity, both human and other than human. And ethics of diversity can start in the recognition that the seen and unseen worlds of human culture are connected, and that it's the boundaries that we imagine between humans and between human and other than human life on Earth that are truly ephemeral. Human diversity is one side of our shared potential. We have to protect it not only for individuals or individual communities, but for the potential that it holds for all life on this Earth in the future. Thank you. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed the um, film. <clears throat> um, I'd like to invite um, Kelly Swayze and um, Nirwan Arsuka to the stage. Good yeah. evening, everyone. Yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> probably a quick... Um, additional introduction which I didn't mention earlier or probably it was not clear. So <coughs> this film was um, produced um, by, uh, supported by both the Center for Religious and Cross-Cultural Studies at Gajah Mada University and the Center for Southeast Asian Studies um, at the University of um, Hawaii. Um, so Dr. Um, Kelly Swayze, <coughs> um, who was in the um, TEDx um, Ubud and um, produced this film. Um, she is um, uh, a lecturer at the center um, at Gajah Mada University um, for many years now. <coughs> and um, she is also the um, project uh, manager of this um, Voicing Diversity Project, which is supported by um, Center for Southeast Asian Studies at um, Hawaii. <coughs> Um, she is an anthropologist. Um, she did um, her um, dissertation research in Manado, um, in Minahasa. Um, so we'll hear um, from her um, later. And um, Nirwan is many things. Uh, <coughs> Well, I, I just found out that um, probably part of him is also um, Bajau. <coughs> so that will make it more interesting. But Nirwan was born in Sulawesi. Um, he did um, his undergraduate study from nuclear engineering at Gajah Mada University. So yeah, nuclear engineering, that's not a mistake, right? And, um, <coughs> but then he, um, he describes um, his activity now as literacy activist. Um, so he has um, what is called as Pustaka Bergerak. <coughs> so he writes on um, horses, boats, and others um, to, bring, to bring books to places which are difficult to um, access. Um, in the past, he was also a curator at Bentara Budaya, um, which is affiliated with the Kompas um, newspaper. Um, <coughs> he was also um, director of Freedom Institute. Um, 
So um, Nirwan will speak um, first. Um, um, we ask him to give his comments, but and also um, later we would um, like to hear your um, comments also. <coughs> and um, actually, we don't have to speak in English. <coughs> um, and Nirwan probably in Bajo, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> English, Indonesia, or Bajo. Um, and um, yeah, we want to hear from you, but um, first um, I ask um, Nirwan to um, give um, his um, comments, please. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, first of all, I would like to express my deep gratitude for those who has made this movie come into existence. Because uh, personally, I see myself, my kind, my, my family in this movie. When I was a child, I can feel the anger and the confusion of uh, these people of the sea. But I cannot formulate it uh, clearly until I see how uh, Iskandar expressed the confusion in this movie. Uh, I still can remember how my family that comes from the sea, uh, the Bajo people, Orang-orang Bajo, uh, they have, they build like a inferiority complex. They know that their neighbor who lives uh, in the cities, they have better lives, they have access to the TVs, to, to the cars and other glittering things, while their, their children, they cannot go to school or the school that the children uh, is studying is not as good as the schools that the other have in the in the cities. But <coughs> what I learned uh, clearly from this uh, movie is that <coughs> actually our the enemies of the Bajau the fierce enemy comes from religion, which is Islam. Islam, of course, helped the Bajo people tame a certain violent side of the life. And uh, Imam, Imam Sibli, in this movie said that how he tried to abolish the violent practices in, 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 in the society. And it, it does, it, it did happen in, in, in our society until the 70s, until the 80s, we still uh, have stories about people who uh, take out its blade, his blade and uh, make conclusion and make, make this violent uh, fighting as a way to conclude their, their conflict. And Islam does, uh, for for a certain re, uh, a certain degree, tame these these uh, violent practices, but then the problematic aspect of Islam is that uh, the religious teaching uh, make the Bajos people disrespect his own tradition. Although the Bajo people themselves. Uh, perceive that there is no contradiction between Islam and Bajau, but the formal education always insists that Bajau is Muslim, just like the, uh, who's the, the little girl, Liz, uh, Salma? Yeah. And, and I think this is happens not only to the Bajau. Uh, Islam, at least not the, the Nusantara Islam, <laughs> The radical Islam has a very jealous God who is incapable to share spaces with other supreme beings. That's the first uh, thing that we can learn from this. Uh, I mean, that make me realize the core of the problem of the Bajau peoples. <coughs> but then we can also uh, learn from this movie that actually Although the, uh, the Bajo people is surrounded by many problems, they do have power to 
to to deal with this and it is beautifully represented in the figure of uh, uh, Ipa, the, 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 the mother, Saipa, Saipa. Saipa, uh, she's clearly not as, uh, as clever or intellectual as her husband. She's, uh, she is just a, a mother, but she's truly expressed the wisdom of how to be a real bajau. She's the only one who can who can lead the the community to 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 perform to to make the circumcision festival festival, and then make the whole community uh, comes together and and. And they dance, and they, they, they sing. And I think uh, the future of Bajo actually lies in this power of how to make uh, this social cohesion, the, the integrity between the, the, the member of the society. If they can, if Bajo people can, can uh, or, or if there are a lot of uh, Bajo people like Ipa, then I believe that the future of Bajo is can be a certain. They have they have future as long as they know how to make their society uh, uh, comes together again through this uh, ritual, through this this tradition. And if this tradition also back up with the uh, the formal knowledge. Like the one we can uh, uh, Tarzan, then of course we have better future. I believe, I believe that other than our cultural identity, uh, proper knowledge of how things really goes, how things work with this scientific knowledge, is the second keys that will help people. Uh, build their own future. That's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, very interesting. Um, I was thinking um, whether the challenge um, to the Bajau tradition comes from Islam, whether it's Bajau versus Islam, or sea versus land. As you said... Sea versus desert. Desert. Desert, okay. <laughs> no, I mean land. Land, land there. I mean the land people... Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we can discuss that. Um, but it's also interesting, your last point about um, the future of the Bajau community may lie within um, people like Saipa. And, and also, did you mention um, a, a Tarsan, yeah, scientific knowledge of, yeah. Okay, that, that's another point we can discuss. Um, it's not only between religion and tradition, but also science and tradition. Um, please, Kelly. Thanks everyone for coming tonight. Um, it's really exciting to finally share this film with a, a large audience. Um, I just want to recognize a few people who aren't here tonight that couldn't be here. Um, of course, Andar and Saipa and their whole family and the community from Sama Bahari or Sampella. This was really a collaborative process. We made this film with them, with their input um, about what was going on in their lives today. There are several pieces of media and films that have been made about the Bajo, but they tend to focus on the Bajo as people who dive um, and about their diving abilities. And that's, that's only one part of Bajo life. We really wanted the Bajo to be able to talk about, in this community, the tensions that they were facing, the problems that they were facing, and to show some of the different perspectives about how people are thinking, even generational differences um, between people like Bojuta and younger people like Salma and Tarsan. Um, I just wanted to talk also about the title. So Matt Colicello and I, who uh, made the film, Matt Colicello is from the Global Workshop. He works on climate change issues and he interviews indigenous people around the world about how their lives are changing or the change that they see in the world because of climate change. And one of the interesting things that we came across while making this film is that the Bajau in Indonesia are often considered people who don't have a land they are pendatang, or they don't have adat because they don't have tana.
but actually their land is the sea. That's why we called this film Our Land is the Sea or Air Tanaku, as they often joke, not Tana Airku. And um, it's a really important point to make that nomadic people, different groups of indigenous peoples, people who live on the ocean, they might not fit into the box of an Adat community, but they are cultural communities with nomadic practices. And we have to learn how to think about how people who have nomadic practices can fit into these schemes in which we classify people as being, oh, this is a kind of Adat community or a cultural community. And why leaving these kinds of people out is so problematic, because they are the ones that have the most explicit knowledge of the marine environment. And that sort of brings me to my final point, which is that indigenous people around the world are starting to talk about how they have been stewards of particular areas, particular environments, in the way that they have a cultural system or a cosmological system that, that tells them how they should interact with their environment. And it's not always perfect, but it gives them a sort of map or a sort of guide about how they should interact with their environment and the other than human things that are around us. And scholars today talk about something called the Anthropocene, which is the current geologic period of time in which human activity has affected the world in a way that is irrevocable. We cannot go back anymore. And one of the things that we try and think about in terms of the Anthropocene is how can we change our perspective to take humans out of the center of the picture and think about how humans and other than human life are in a relationship that we have to work on and improve in order that we can all survive on this planet. And indigenous peoples have had this knowledge. They have their own way of approaching this that, that rarely gets considered or valued as something that's useful when we're talking about conservation efforts. And this is where this comes back to the idea of religion and discrimination and diversity. When we discriminate against people's practices of Islam, when we discriminate against different kinds of religions, against um, Aliran Kepercayaan, for instance, what we're discriminated against is people's cosmological systems that give them a guide for how to live on this earth with human and other than human counterparts. And so you cannot separate discrimination, issues of diversity in Indonesia from these environmental issues because they're all part of the same system. And so we have to protect human diversity in order to protect biodiversity and the environment. These things have to go together. And we have to get, I think, young people like Tarzan and Salma to also believe that their community has value and knowledge that is worthwhile and that other people can learn from them just like they can learn from other people. And that's really what we hope to communicate with this short film and some of these stories from the people of Sama Bahari village. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> very um, interesting and uh, reflection. And again, uh, many things um, we can discuss. So Nirwan speak about um, learning science, um, but you also spoke uh, about um, how we learn from them to deal with the, anthrop uh, the Anthropocene um, situation. So we still have um, um, almost an hour. Well. 45 or 50 minutes, um, so there's still um, plenty of time. Um, and I'd like to hear from you now. Um, what is your response to this film? And also, if you have a um, question to um, Kelly. Kelly was there um, doing the filming um, in the area for, for um, some time. Um, and Nirwan was born. <laughs> in the area. So yeah, you can ask questions, um, but also um, your comments. And again, um, Bahasa Indonesia atau Bahasa Inggris, silahkan, please. Hi, my name is Tao Nguyen. I am a US student research, Fulbright student researcher. I just finished in Wakatobi. So I wanted to ask, how did you particularly choose this family? And how did you communicate them in terms of Bahasa Indonesia or Bahasa Bajo? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I met this community in 2011. I used to bring student groups out there. Um, 
this community was associated with Operation Wallacea on Hoga, and so they had had visitors, and they often have visitors, international visitors come out, and so I had gone out there with a group of students and happened to sort of get to know this family and our Insipa and their family. Um, and so that's how it started. Back in 2011, we really had already thought at that point, wow, we, we'd like to do a project with them because they had a great desire to express themselves and were having trouble getting people to listen to what was going on with them. Um, in terms of communication, um, we use Indonesian mostly for the most part. Um, almost everyone in the village speaks Indonesian. Um, Bang Sama, I don't speak it well enough. I can understand some, but I not enough to communicate. So all of the pieces that we translated of the Bang Sama, I worked with Andar to translate the Bang Sama to Indonesian, and then I translated the Indonesian to English. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I am really touched by your uh, speech, especially about the Bajo. And I'm it is really new, uh, not a new perspective, but you made it to a uh, frame, uh, 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 make me uh, like a pola pikir yang baru, seperti itu. Uh, tentang bahwa uh, diver uh, human diversity uh, adalah salah satu cara untuk konservasi uh, lingkungan di mana mereka memiliki pola pikir untuk berinteraksi dengan alam dengan cara yang lestari seperti itu. Uh, what I want to ask is, uh, you you said something about Hawaii people before. Uh, I want to know how Hawaiian people keep their indigenous. Uh, because I only know Hawaii people from Lilo and Stitch film, and I thought that it was good. <laughs> and which come to another question about how to manage these Bajo people, because from my perspective, they have an unnormal way of life, like they're nomadic. And maybe from my perspective, they they do not want to be managed, like they don't have rules. And how government making them to, what is it, mematuhi aturan, seperti itu. Sorry, can you introduce yourself? You right. haven't, yeah. My name is Yuli. I am from Marine Affairs Ministry in Fishery. Menteri Kelautan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Menteri Susi. Um, yeah, next question. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Shiva. I was a biology student. And I was having an experience to uh, working with indi indigenous people in Lama Kera, uh, East Flores. And I, I was intrigued by your idea that by a, by a to protect our biodiversity is to protect our human diversity first. So in order to keep biodiversity, is it really necessary to keep human diversity first? So in another word, human first or local people first, then biodiversity. So if we uh, fulfill their needs so we can protect the biodiversity. But what if the local people are not cooperated enough? Are not cooperative enough? Like I, what I did in Loma Kera was to protect Mantarei, Mantarei conservation, and then they were asking a lot of, you know, demands, and it's really hard to do conservation to fulfill their demands. So, what do you think about that? Thank you. Hello, my name is Meta. I'm from Jogja. I actually was Kelly student. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is really interesting for me um, and hit me in the face that, like, I mean, I'm young and mostly people here young too. Um, this is like bring up to us a very, you know, like, super diversity that we always think about diversity as just like religion, culture, but this one is in another level, I think. So I just want to ask you a question about um, our marine ministry, um, Ibu Susi, that just uh, do like a conservation with the goggle things that she wanted to um, give, uh, give goggle to children in the coastal area with the understanding that the, the children, um, they do not really understand about the reef and what's under the sea. 
because they not really able to see when they dive. My question is, is that a really good presumption to start um, to, you know, like um, helping the biodiversity development? Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll take more questions later, uh, but please, um, yeah, Kelly, you want to start, and then Mas Nirwan. Sure. Um, so the question about, I think, Hawaii was, was the first one. What is, what is the culture? How is it like in Hawaii? I think the Hawaiian people have f faced very similar problems. Um, their culture was also discriminated against. Um, they also faced cultural eradication. And in the 1980s, there was a great cultural renaissance movement in Hawaii. And there was a, a, a concerted effort to bring pride back to Hawaiian culture. So for instance, now you can send your child to a, a Hawaiian language school, s immersion school, so that they can learn their native tongue. And you can write your dissertation or thesis in Hawaiian or English at any university in Hawaii. And for the Hawaiians, the environment was always part of their religious practice and always part of their culture. Um, and so part of their reclaiming their culture and taking agency and control again was about having control over the environment and being involved in scientific and government programs that have to do with any of the environment in the Hawaiian Islands. And they've been actually extremely successful in doing this. Um, one of the examples is there's a telescope that's being built on Mauna Kea, which is a sacred mountain in the big island of Hawaii. And some of the Hawaiians believe that that is not Sesawai with what the ancestor, the, the Luhur, want. And so there has been a lot of negotiation over how is that telescope going to be built and who has the right to build things on sacred lands because it, in the Hawaiian view, it takes the land out of balance if you do things like that. So I actually think Hawaii is a really great example. Um, I know in Lilo and Stitch you only see, you know, sort of the touristy version of what Hawaii is, but there's actually a really um, strong tradition of of Hawaiian leaders standing up and saying, our knowledge is valuable too, and it has to be a part of the governance and the policies that are created for this tiny chain of islands that are in the middle of the ocean. And so it's a good example. Um, in terms of how do we integrate communities or how do we get them to, I think this can answer both of the questions, how do we get them to behave in a sense? Um, I think we have to think about the reasons why they might be doing the things that they're doing before we start to say, oh, they, they're not following the rules correctly. For the most part with these communities, their lifestyles and livelihoods existed long before there was an Indonesia or even an idea of what Indonesia was. And so actually they have been forced to adapt to the rules that came in long after them. Oftentimes they don't get respected in terms of that they might have knowledge or the reason that they're doing things might be because they have a greater understanding of the environment than the people who are making policies say in Jakarta, right? And they get sort of discriminated against in the sense that, you know, oh, orang kampung, orang dari desa, gini gini. They don't understand. They don't understand science. And I don't think that it's the case that they don't understand at all. What has to happen is some sort of kurjasama between these parties to understand each other and to also look at the limitations that people are facing. When the Bajau started using destructive fishing practices, part of the reason they did that is because they were forced to become sedentary. They used to be nomadic. They moved around to different places and that was part of their way of conserving the environment when they are forced to settle and have a settlement and they can't move and they have to go along with all the rules of the national park, they feel tersinggung, they feel angry, they feel like no one listens to what they have to say, and then their resources are running out, and so they're simply just trying to survive. So we have to go back and look at what is the root problem that, that makes them engage in behaviors that are destructive and think of it in a larger sense rather than just sort of blaming one small community and in fact, they're not the reason why the oceans are, have less fish. There are much larger regions, and all of our human behavior <laughs> is contributing to that, right? Um, in terms of biodiversity and, and human diversity, I don't think that one is more important than the other. I think they're equally important. But I think we need to understand that from a cultural anthropology perspective, that we're not just preserving culture for culture's sake. Culture actually has important knowledge that we need in order to preserve biodiversity. 
we have to protect both of them. And biodiversity is important for humanity. And so we have to see both of those things as equally valuable in order to go forward for all humankind in a way that's going to be sustainable because we are facing problems that seem insurmountable right now in terms of what's happening with the global environment. So I don't think that one is necessarily more important than the other. It's just that we often think, we often say, oh, we have to protect biodiversity. And yeah, you know, cultures are losing their homes because biodiversity is disappearing. But the opposite is also true. We have to protect human diversity because human diversity and biodiversity aren't things that can be separated. They are part of the same system, the same natural world, if you want to say it that way. Well, I think that goes back to what I just said. What, what does it mean not to cooperate? And why might people have a reason to not cooperate? I think oftentimes they feel that their perspective is not even listened to. And so the non-cooperation might have a lot of different um, reasons behind it. And they're not just about people being difficult. They're about people wanting agency to make decisions for their own lives and wanting to have a part in the development of policies and to be respected as citizens just like anybody else, I think. Yeah. Um, Meta, I think you've been stalking my, my Twitter or something. You know I've been talking about <laughs> Ibu Susi's um, policy. I understand what Bu Susi is trying to say, that tourists come into Indonesia and get to enjoy the natural world and scuba dive and see all of these beautiful things in the ocean and the children are standing on the beach side watching them and not really understanding what, what's going on. However, I think that starting from a place of saying that coastal peoples don't have knowledge of their own environment is not really the most useful way to think about conservation. Because I can guarantee if you talk to some of those kids on the beach and their families, that they probably have very intimate knowledge of the environment that they live in. It's not just about not seeing the ocean. What are the reasons why the kids don't have access to the ocean th these days? What are the other factors that are going on? And just giving them goggles is not going to solve the problem. Involving them in the kinds of policies that the Kementria and Kalautan and all of that are making is the way to go forward, not just saying, well, they simply, again, it's that attitude that they're orangdesa, they don't understand anything, but that isn't true. I'm arguing the opposite. They understand a lot, and it's maybe on our side that we need to spend some more time trying to figure out how to translate that knowledge into things like policies and scientific research that can be helpful for all of us. So although I understand her sentiment, I'm not really sure that, that reducing people to not understanding their own environment is the best way to start a program like that. Yeah. Uh ada tadi yang dari Kementerian Kelautan, jadi mungkin nanti bisa disampaikan ke Bu Susi untuk mengundang screening film ini di Kementerian Kelautan. Ya, ya setuju. <laughs> Oke, okay. silahkan Mas Nirwan. Terima kasih. Ini saya agak lebih lancar kalau ngomong dalam bahasa Indonesia ya. Oke, <laughs> oke. Okay, okay. uh, I think Bajo is an example of how uh, traditional culture is actually very open to uh, outer influence. For example, in this movie, uh, there is a Uh, a person who represent what is in Bugis called uh, bisu, which is uh, mudder. Yeah? <coughs> uh, he's very, for a Buginess, mudder is uh, a, a true bisu, uh, a saman who represent, who, who becomes the, the medium between the earth and the, the sky. And between Bugis and, uh, and Saman or Bajau, we can trace the like uh, mutual contribution that enrich their own uh, culture. For Bugis, they learn from the Bajau about the ocean, about the coral, about the canoes. But the Bugis also contribute 
to the Bajau culture about the forest, about the astral beings, about how to perform uh, uh, a certain rituals. But this doesn't happen in case of Wahhabi and and uh, Bajau or an other culture, of course, because we are facing a system that is content with itself, closed. Islam, Wahhabi is, uh, you know, it is closed system. It, it, it perceives itself already complete and perfect. Uh, it doesn't accept influence, but eagerly spread or even uh, 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 pushing campaign to, to, to turn other culture into more Islamic uh, way of living. So uh, if we see how the Ambo, Ambo Juta, Ambo Juta is, uh, I, he's impressive, very impressive people because he's trying very hard to to uh, reconcile between the Bajau worldview and Islamic worldview. He's the one who said that actually there is no contradiction between uh, Bajau's belief and Islamic teaching. He even uh, confidently said that it is Sandro who make people Muslim. So in that way, he, he gave another another uh, contribution to the to the notion of what is to become how how people become muslim at least in that in that certain in that certain region but we we didn't see this thing comes from the imam sibli imam sibli comes to uh, 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 spend his life uh, dedicate dedicate his life to this community which is a uh, very uh, something that we need we have to respect but he doesn't express the need to teach to learn something from this this culture he comes with a certain notion that he is uh, he has a complete knowledge all that he need to do is to change the the kids and then the parents will follow so so I think this problem is very important if we talk about uh, diversity. We cannot, we cannot create diversity with with closed system. We cannot, we cannot uh, expect enrichment from from either religion or uh, or maybe scientific point of view, which is uh, think that it doesn't need other other contribution from other uh, worldview and. I think uh, the the hard line, Islamic hard line, is uh, becomes uh, can be can be a, a real problem in this case. And about the the masalah kelautan, the I think that actually the local culture indeed has a wisdom. To to cope with this uh, with these uh, oceanic problems, we can I think we can learn a lot from the people of let's say Raja Ampat. They have certain rules, traditional traditional value, which protect the life of the fishes. They they have certain days that people are prohibited to to go to the ocean. But the problem is, this cultural, uh, this local culture, is effective to limited uh, limited space. Uh, that's why we can save the fishes only in the in the uh, uh, in the certain region of of uh, Raja Ampat. This kind of failure cannot save the planet from climate change. That's why we need, other than, of course, we still need to retain. We need to. We need to 
write and trans uh, make the uh, the newer generation learn a lot, learn everything from our culture, but also uh, we have to learn many things from this uh, science, from this technology, because the, the scope, the scale of the problem that we are facing now cannot be handled with the, with, with only with the cultural value that we inherit from our, from our ancestors. Our, ans our ancestors, our culture can save us, can save us for ourselves, but maybe it can help. It doesn't. It, it doesn't have influence outside of our our uh, traditional region. Yeah. So <coughs> I think uh, one. This film certainly has uh, layers of messages, and. For me, the message that people need to re to respect their culture and uh, learn everything from the the outside world, including scientific thinking, it is very important. And for me, not only because I'm a bajau, but also as a nuclear engineer, <laughs> I can see that. I can see that this this two world view, the traditional one and the, the scientific one, they have their own limits. Science makes us powerful, but it doesn't enrich our life. Culture makes our life rich, but it doesn't give our it doesn't give us enough pow enough power to 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 to, to contribute to the the change of the changing world if these two kind of uh, treasure then of course we we can we 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 can make a lot of contribution not only for ourselves or our our people but also to people outside of our national boundaries which is uh, also one way to say to be a uh, bajau, you know? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Marasiruan. So, um, yeah, after seeing the connection between biodiversity and human diversity, cultural diversity, I think Nirwan added um, one other component, which is the diversity of <coughs> Islams, maybe, or Islamic interpretation. Some are more favorable to traditional way of life, to knowledge, to traditional knowledge, um, some are not. And um, then also um, about the new types of um, scientific knowledge, which is also needed um, to deal with the larger issues of um, today. Um, so there was another, um, yeah, tadi ada mbak yang di tengah tadi sempat, tadi mau tanya. Hello, my name is, uh, hi. Yeah. Hi, my name is Adrida. I'm a poet writer, but I also work in Parliament in the Committee Three, a specialist for drafting the law about uh, indigenous people. But what I want to take here is about inf inspirations of this movie. Most of the phenomena and uh, some of the problems sometimes come to the society with dip the different perceptions, and then sometimes we need another media to showing up. Uh, what is the reality in, in there and what we can get to have some of the, how to say it, um, bondings. I mean, sometimes this is like a long story that always happens if I'm following some of the uh, meetings in the parliaments. It always happens on and on about, uh, uh, what do you call, um, karipan lokal and then uh, the people, the indigenous, uh, indigenous, and then the, the 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 nature, the sea, and everything. Uh, I w I have just uh, come from uh, some of meeting with ministry at the time. So we are uh, some of the young people. I writing down the poetry with the titles uh, "Perempuan Perempuan Pesisir," but now because I don't uh, watching the movie totally uh, all things. Maybe next I will watching with 
Miss uh, Ter Arwan also and you and maybe others. I just want to asking you a few of questions about the woman in that movie. What kind of teaching that they teach that they teach to their children about the nature, about the God, about everything? Is it we have something to share to any other people about that? Because sometimes woman is the center of everything, uh, and also sometimes also the agent of peace. When any times have a conflict, the woman will be grab everything and saying that uh, we are okay and. Uh, the, and they're trying to do anything. I also uh, want to asking you, Mr. Uh, Arwan. I saw you in the TV, and now I saw you directly <laughs> for the Pustaka Bergerak. I would like to asking you questions, not only about this movie, ma but maybe about your vision, and then how you can transfer the spirit for the young peoples. Maybe some of you say that more of them is like not feel comfortable with the position when they are uh, was born then. How you can get some of the confidence as the person and get education and working and finally have a global perspective, how to make the literacy as a kind of the political literation as you mentioned before. How, how it you can build it? Is it from a long time ago and finally you make the initiative or maybe because, uh, what do you call? This is the problem in our country about the literacy. Because I also after doing my journey, I'm going to Takabo Nerate I think it was my last day in the sea, in, in the, what is it, in the tengah tengah laut. There's no benzene anymore, the gasoline. So I think, oh my God, I let my soul there because we want to so give the book to the peoples. And we see, look like everybody kids like twins because all the faces same and they love to see us. And they say, oh, they, they, I, we bring the books, we bring the uh, pencil and everything. And we're asking them to, to, to uh, what, what their ambition in life. Some of them to be a teacher, to be a, what do you call a, what do you call a b b uh, ball player, apa? Uh, sepak bola, main sepak bola and everything. And some of them to be a bidan nurse. And sometimes we see it, it was us, but we don't know for the many things. So I just want to get the spirit of it. Who knows I can also make the poetry. Because sometimes the documentary movie needs some of, uh, how to say, something that enriching your soul and you can transfer to all people that this is not only uh, Indonesian's problem in the East, but also maybe like uh, our people say that it was in the, in the uh, what is it, the US, in Hawaii and everything. And from that, we can make it some of the new perspective again. So I also, what is it, offering, uh, who knows one day you want to make something, want to uh, release or want to screen this in many uh, place. We would like to make the poetry for you because the last I get some offering from Pao about stunting. Before they closing with donate some of the nature, they asking us to make a poetry about that. And I make uh, the poetry about the blue eyes of the kids. So something like that. So that's all. <laughs> the question is very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Mas Trisno. Okay. <coughs> My name is Trisno and I'm a friend of Kelly. So I just come here to congratulate uh, Kelly for this beautiful movie. But I will choose to speak in Indonesian language to celebrate the uh, linguistic diversity also. <laughs> Jadi film ini menyentuh sekali dan langsung membuat suasana menjadi melankolis. Karena kita sesungguhnya berada di berada di perbatasan ini terus menerus. Kalau saya membaca film ini, saya selalu mengatakan bahwa ini dunia yang akan hilang. Dan hampir bisa dipastikan apapun yang mau dilakukan, atas nama apapun juga dunia ini akan hilang. Tadi ceritanya sangat jelas, ikan-ikan sudah makin tidak ada, karang sudah hancur, dan kalau dilihat dari lokasi tidak jauh dari situ kepada Kementerian Kelautan maupun mereka yang di DPR harusnya sudah tahu tidak jauh dari situ ada eh, pusat global untuk menangkap ikan besar-besaran yang di bagian atas Papua itu. Dan kalau teman saya yang pernah ke sana melihat itu mirip seperti melihat kapal apa kapal induk yang luar biasa besar dan selalu terang sampai tengah malam 
Mereka mengangkat ikan habis-habisan dan tidak pernah ada satu orang pun yang berani menyetop langkah itu. Jadi dengan kata lain, itulah dunia akan hilang. Apapun yang kita akan lakukan. Kita juga akan menghadapi climate change dan ini bukan persoalan dari orang baju sendiri, tapi dari luar. Saya teringat pada cerita yang hampir sama yang belum lama ini juga pernah diputar di televisi, eh, laporan jurnalistik mengenai kehidupan orang badui dalam. Di mana mereka tadinya tidak boleh memegang handphone, tapi sekarang sudah makin lama makin orang memegang handphone, lalu pergi sekolah dan sebagainya. Dan kita tahu bahwa pendidikan itu mengasingkan kita semua dari semua lingkungan ini. Karena pendidikan kita kan seragam. Pendidikan kita membuat kita tidak tahu lagi tentang akar kita. Seorang teman saya yang bergerak untuk hak-hak eh, masyarakat adat di Cigugur pernah mengatakan dengan bagus sekali. Pendidikan membuat kita takut pada lumpur. Karena kaki kita tidak mau pergi lagi ke sawah. Kita maunya duduk di ruang ber AC, kita maunya bekerja di perusahaan modern. Siapa yang akan mau pergi ke sawah kalau Anda sudah bergelar doktor misalnya. Nah ini hal-hal seperti ini yang menunjukkan bahwa film ini, saya terus terang tadi menonton film ini dan ini sangat menyentuh karena ini merupakan mungkin bagian dari melankoli tentang kehidupan kita yang akan kita tinggalkan pada suatu waktu. Nah, karena itulah saya bertanya pada Kelly sesungguhnya, tadi Kelly mengatakan dalam e, waktu dalam speech di TED itu, yang saya, saya bilang pada Kelly, apa itu betul kamu? Really Karena berbeda. <laughs> Tapi saya mau tanya begini, Kelly tadi mengatakan bahwa e, mempertahankan cultural diversity dan biodiversity itu, itu sebuah langkah etis. An ethical choice, kata Kelly. Nah, menurut saya ini juga persoalan etis sangat besar dihadapi oleh apa yang tadi saya gambarkan sebagai menghilangnya e, masyarakat seperti ini. Apakah konservasi itu berarti mempertahankan gaya hidup yang seperti ini? Di tengah kemustahilan situasi yang sekarang terjadi. Apakah kalau mengkonservasi orang bajau berarti tetap mempertahankan mereka untuk tetap di laut? Dan jangan pergi ke darat. Tapi itu berarti kita mempertahankan bagian dari masyarakat kita untuk tetap nomaden di sana. Mungkin romantis. Ya kan? Ada romantisme juga bahwa sebagian dari kita dipertahankan di sana. Tapi untuk saya itu persoalan etis. Apakah kita bisa mengatakan begitu? Apakah kita mempertahankan orang Papua untuk tetap memakai koteka mereka dan seterusnya? Itu persoalan etis yang layer etis yang berbeda mungkin, tapi saya ingin meminta komentar Kelly dalam soal itu. Dan yang kedua, dari Nirwan, baru tahu aku kamu itu orang baju Nir. Terus terang aja, selama ini kita kenalan tapi baru tahu ini. Saya ingin tahu dan saya minta Nirwan berbahasa Indonesia dengan karena bahasa Indonesia Nirwan sangat baik. Jadi saya minta menjelaskan proses apa. Tadi kan Nirwan mengatakan bahwa uh, uh, ada batasannya. Culture itu punya batasannya, scientific modern juga punya batasannya. Tapi saya kira Nirwan mengalami transisi di dua level ini kan. Mungkin bisa menceritakan sedikit. Bagaimana proses-proses itu terjadi dan apa yang kira-kira mungkin kita bisa belajar bersama dari situ. Dan pakailah bahasa Indonesia. Terima kasih. Oke, terima kasih. Di sebelah Trisno yang orang besar ada orang besar lain. Mas Dandi dari Watchdog. Mau kasih komentar juga Mas? Iya Mas. Iya terima kasih. Yang pertama saya pikir bukan pada soal agama. Uh, ya agama turunan saja menurut saya. Problem terbesar yang dihadapi oleh orang Bajo di Malaysia, di Filipina, sampai Selandia Baru adalah institusi yang bernama negara. Jadi daya destruksinya, frontline-nya ketemu tumbukannya dengan negara. 
karena harus beridentitas dan identitas kita ada kolom agama, <laughs> mereka terpaksa harus masukin agama. Dan karena di pesisir kita adalah masyarakat Bugis, akhirnya tahunya Islam. Karena pedalamannya eh, Kristen, Katolik ada di pedalaman. Pesisir Bugis semua, Bugis Islam, maka eh, apa namanya Bajau interaksinya dengan Islam. Jadi elemen Islam nomor dua menurut saya setelah tumbukan pertama dengan yang namanya state. Eh, religion point of view dan segala macam itu menyusul belakangan. Dan memperburuk memang karena tadi konsep mereka dengan gurita saja twin, tiba-tiba dikenalkan dengan Islam yang e, khalifah. <laughs> saya the boss, saya bosnya. E, saya bosnya gurita. <laughs> saya bosnya kima atau saya bosnya e, e, kerang. Gitu ya. e, konsep khalifah ini kemudian ya mendekonstruksi semua hal, memperburuk. Lalu negara muncul lagi dalam sistem pendidikan. E, yang makin ya tadi tidak tidak menggali potensi bahwa mereka secara alamnya, secara evolusi mungkin meninggalkan laut itu iya dan tidak bisa jadi bisa jadi tidak juga karena misalnya e, tidak ada kekerasan ekologi di sana, tidak ada kekerasan sistem ekonomi yang kapitalistik di sana, tidak ada eksploitasi pada laut maka mereka tidak akan pergi juga dari laut evolusinya akan lebih lama kita tahu masih ada tadi disebut lama kera ada lama lera yang lebih lama 600 tahun karena tidak bersentuhan dengan organ-organ eh, apa namanya negara dan dan ekonomi kapitalisme mereka agak lebih lama tapi mereka yang sudah lebih duluan ditumbuk negara ditumbuk sistem pendidikan dan ditumbuk ekonomi pasar mereka lebih cepat meninggalkan laut bukan karena posisi-posisi yang sadar tetapi karena violence mereka terpaksa meninggalkan laut ya mereka mengenal bom juga dari orang Bugis <laughs> karena mereka sebelumnya tidak ya tidak 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 ada kepentingan mereka ngebom mereka tergantung sekali dengan terumbu karang setelah mereka bentap di darat e, mereka tidak punya ikatan lagi dengan karang ya, ya mereka menjadi generasi yang sama dengan dengan Bugis atau e, suku-suku lain yang lebih dahulu jadi saya belum melihat kita melihat pada negara ini karena bagi saya setan terbesarnya di negara di institusi negara ini Dia meminta mereka harus punya identitas, dia meminta mereka meninggalkan laut, karena lautnya kemudian diserahkan ke Tommy Winata, atau diserahkan ke perusahaan e, mutiara, atau diserahkan ke transipmen, macam-macam. Jadi mereka dianggap hama kemudian, karena teritori-teritori ini akan dieksploitasi. Kalau ada mere- masih ada mereka berkeliaran, agenda-agenda modalnya tidak bisa jalan. Jadi komentar saya itu aja. Oke, terima kasih. <tuh> uh, komentar-komentar makin berbobot. Um, waktu kita tinggal 98 menit 40 detik <tuh> karena saya disuruh berhenti 825 um, jadi silahkan Kelly dan Nirwan share terima kasih saya uh, jawab dulu yang tentang ini ya uh, bagaimana uh, culture dan science itu ya saya kira Di film ini juga dengan sangat bagus ditunjukkan oleh Mbok Juta ketika dia bercerita tentang pengetahuan-pengetahuan tradisional yang dia warisi dari kakeknya. Dia kan ditanya apa sih yang dapat di situ. I learn how to be an honorable man. Kan itu yang, dan saya kira memang yang paling penting dari kebudayaan itu bagaimana menjadi manusia yang bermartabat. Itu tidak diajarkan sains. Sains mengajari kita bagaimana bintang bergerak, bagaimana uh, arus pasang naik atau turun, tentang kejadian-kejadian fisik, tentang tentang hukum-hukum alam, tapi tentang bagaimana pengeta, apa, bagaimana tindakan kita membuat kita menjadi manusia yang bermartabat, itu kan kita dapat dari culture, itu yang kita dapat dari kebudayaan kita. Jadi uh, saya kira di sini sudah kelihatan uh, pembagiannya masing-masing kan. Masyarakat Bajo barangkali uh, kalau Bajo tradisional barangkali tahu bagaimana menjadi manusia bermartabat, tapi kalau mereka tidak mengerti sains, mereka mungkin tidak akan bisa paham betul mengapa uh, uh, climate change terjadi. 
yang mereka anggap adalah ini kayaknya leluhur mulai marah nih ke kita-kita. Padahal kalau leluhur yang marah kan orang baju tidak bisa bikin apa-apa. Mereka tidak bisa berbuat. Ada kelumpuhan kemudian yang terjadi kalau pandangan itu yang kita terima. Tapi kalau kita punya pengetahuan yang cukup jelas tentang bagaimana climate change itu terjadi dan bagaimana tindakan kita bisa mempengaruhi itu, maka kita terbebas dari kelumpuhan intelektual yang disebabkan oleh terbatasnya atau ajaran dari leluhur itu kan. Jadi di sini saya, saya lihat memang betapa pentingnya orang-orang seperti uh, Tarsan, kemudian uh, Andar yang yang e, membekali dirinya dengan bukan hanya gagasan tentang kebebasan, tapi juga tentang bagaimana alam bekerja, itu bisa ikut memberi sumbangan pada e, orang-orang baja untuk e, menghadapi perubahan ini. Ya, e, Memang salah satu problem terbesar yang bukan hanya orang baja hadapi itu adalah, e, terutama generasi mudanya ini, mereka... Teman-teman kita ini, adik-adik kita ini dibanjir, dibombardir dengan pengetahuan-pengetahuan dari luar. Tapi eh, pengetahuan-pengetahuan lokalnya memang tidak tidak ada yang urus. Begitu para sandro-sandro sakti ini, saman-saman hebat ini meninggal, terputuskan pengetahuan-pengetahuan itu. Pustaka bergerak mencoba me- mengisi di bagian itu. Kita tidak bisa mem- melakukan sesuatu untuk menyelamatkan pengetahuan-pengetahuan lokal yang luar biasa itu, tapi kawan-kawan relawan bisa melakukan sesuatu untuk membuat masyarakat tergerak menuliskan pengetahuan-pengetahuan itu. Karena kalau tidak dilukiskan, di, tidak dituliskan, hanya menjadi cerita, hanya menjadi apa ya e, tradisi oral, memang sangat terancam ini, gampang sekali punah ini anunya e, pengetahuan-pengetahuan ini dan Bajo memang akan menjadi apa the last of the Mohicans juga itu ya. Ya ini kan memang bukan bukan gejala khas orang Bajo saja, orang-orang Indian di Amerika juga menghadapi hal yang sama walaupun mereka mungkin lebih violent di sana. Dan kalau kita usut eh, barangkali Bung Dadi benar juga sebagaimana yang terjadi pada orang-orang Indian state lah yang me- membuat mendispossess orang-orang eh, Indian atau orang-orang Bajo ini ya. Walaupun juga kalau kita lihat di dalam film tadi, saya kira negara juga mencoba juga ya, ada hal-hal yang dilakukan loh oleh negara di situ, kita lihat bangunan terbaik, bangunan paling kokoh di dalam film itu adalah SD Negeri Sama Bahari. Ya kan? Jadi negara itu mencoba melakukan sesuatu di situ, paling tidak secara fisik. Problemnya memang soal isinya ini. Soal isinya, pendidikan formal yang masuk ke sekolah-sekolah di Bajo dan saya kira hampir di semua tempat itu memang tidak mengandung itu ya, tidak mengandung, eh, maksud saya begini, ketika adik-adik kecil itu kita tanya, kita datangi dan kita bawa buku-buku yang isinya komik dan bercerita bergambar, kemudian kita kasih mereka pilihan mau baca buku komik atau buku pelajaran yang didistribusikan oleh pendidik e, Dikbud, mereka akan milih baca buku-buku komik. Sementara buku-buku Dikbud mau diapain? Kata mereka, kalau bisa buang aja ke laut. Alasannya Pak, terlalu banyak ceramahnya, terlalu banyak perintahnya. Tidak ada unsur permenannya misalnya. Nah, negara ini terlalu dini ingin mendisiplinkan warganya lewat e, buku-buku pelajaran tersebut. Tidak, tidak memberi kesempatan buat anak-anak untuk untuk uh, menjadi bebas untuk menjadi menjadi barangkali juga menjadi gila atau apa segala macam ya kita dari awal itu sudah belum belum bahkan sejak paut pun kita sudah diminta untuk intak misalnya kan ini, ini juga unsur-unsur bagaimana uh, uh, apa uh, infrastruktur negara yang sudah dibangun ini tidak diisi oleh e, pendidikan liberal yang seharusnya disediakan oleh negara dan kemudian di, di, dibajak oleh e, pandangan-pandangan religius yang masuk ke situ, yakni pandangan religius yang yang juga sebenarnya hanya mewakili satu pandangan tertentu di dalam Islam misalnya. Nah, ini jadi jadi e, maksud saya saya setuju bahwa 
faktor negara juga perlu dipertimbangkan dan celakanya di film ini tidak ada disebut ya. Kita tidak melihat secara eksplisit eh, eh, apa eh, pengaruh negara di situ. Tidak sebagaimana misalnya pengaruh agama yang direpresentasikan oleh Imam Sibli misalnya. Atau eh, atau apa ya eh, eh, dorongan untuk bertahan dari dari tradisi-tradisi yang direpresentasikan baik oleh Ambok Juta maupun oleh e, Muder. Ini dua orang ini kan juga terutama saya kira Muder ya, saya sangat tersentuh dengan dengan orang ini yang terasa dari penjelasannya itu dia sebenarnya tidak yakin betul dengan ininya ya. Dia dia merasa bahwa ini tradisi ya, tapi kalau kita tidak lakukan anak-anak bisa sakit. Tapi dia itu dengan suara pelan dia sampaikan itu. Ya kan? Tapi dia coba gitu loh. Nah, ya, yang kayak gini-gini kan yang kemudian semakin hilang di, di kultur kita. Dan kalau tidak ada yang mencoba menuliskan ini, kalau kita cuma berharap dari cerita yang disampaikan turun temurun, memang akan habis ini, akan okay. habis. Dan saya kira yeah. itu yang coba dilakukan oleh kawan-kawan pustaka bergerak. Dan harusnya gerakan literasi juga bergerak ke sana ini, hmm. membuat masyarakat bangga dengan kebudayaannya. Dan bersedia untuk menuliskan dan mewariskannya. Jangan sampai anak-anak sudah tidak tahu siapa itu Mbok Janggo, tapi bisa bicara panjang lebar tentang Ronaldinho misalnya. Hmm. Oke. Okay. Ya, makasih. Silahkan kali. Um, well, I've got a minute and a half here, so. Well, <laughs> take your time. Take your time. Um, I just wanted to answer the question about women in Sampala and in Bajau communities. Um, they have an extremely important role, and in fact, they're really the center of the community. Saipa and her mother and her daughter are the people who are really carrying on the traditions in many ways, and um, are the ones who are feeling perhaps the most stuck, like mereka terjebak juga di antara modern dan tradisi. So Salma, who really respects her mother and her grandmother, sees that when the Puskesmas um, people deal with the Bajau community, they're very discriminatory towards them. They're not very nice to them. And the Bajau often come in and complain about things that have to do with their beliefs about the ocean. That's what makes them sick in their understanding. And the people at the Puskas Mas don't want to listen to them. So Salma wants to be a doctor so that she can be the first Bajau doctor who can translate and be a mediator between those two worlds, the modern world and the traditional world that she doesn't want to see disappear, but she's not really sure where her role is going to be, and that's how, that's how she sees her role for the future. Um, people like, there was Mbo Sayatina, who's in the, the part where they're doing the ritual. Um, she is still extremely active and has um, people who sort of intern with her as Sandro, including Mudur, who has learned under her. And here's the really wonderful thing about this community is that not only do women have an equal position, but people of different genders, transgender people, are also respected as ritual experts. And everyone's able to coexist in that, even though people have different ideas about Islam and about gender and about the way people should live. And so um, it's really remarkable in that sense. And we hope that young people like Salma will be able to achieve what she needs to through education and yet still remain a Bajau person and be able to live in both worlds because that's what all of those young people are going to have to do. So I would also love to have some poetry made, so please let's talk after this. Oh, um, in, in 27 seconds, I'm supposed to answer the question of ethics, right? You philosophers, you know. <laughs> I'll, just say, I'll just say it very shortly. We can talk after this. Um, in a Habermasian sense, right, the public is where people are supposed to voice their aspirations. But we know that not everyone's aspirations get voiced or heard in, in the same way. There's always change. Cultures always change. And that is inevitable. One thing that culture is, is change. That's part of its function. And yet, there's a difference between change and eradication. And we want everyone to have agency to contribute to this society in an equal sort of way. And we know for some communities like the Bajo, they don't have an equal ability to contribute their voice to society. So the ethical part is not that we have to preserve every culture, not that things can't change, but that we have to give everyone an opportunity to voice their aspirations to make the best possible collective that we can. And that means making up or elevating those people who don't get the same sort of power in their voice in the public that 
I do as a, you know, American white professor sitting on a stage and talking about it, right? We have to address those imbalances. And for me, that's sort of the ethical part of it, is to be willing to listen and to entertain that there are other kinds of life that we might not agree with, but somehow we might be able to find some value and meet in the middle. Okay. Terima kasih. Ada satu pertanyaan besar tadi yang ditanyakan Trisno yang saya kira tidak perlu kita jawab. <coughs> Apakah dunia ini akan hilang? Apakah sudah pasti akan hilang atau masih ada kemungkinan menyelamatkannya? Saya tidak tahu jangan-jangan itu sebagai filosof pertanyaannya mungkin keliru. <laughs> Tapi saya tidak usah lebih jauh. Uh, apa, terima kasih untuk uh, apa, kehadiran Anda semua. Uh, saya tidak akan menyimpulkan, um, saya akan menyampaikan saja um, <coughs> sebagian dari persoalan, banyak sekali persoalan yang kita bicarakan tadi soal agama, lingkungan, uh, apa, budaya, tradisi, keragaman macam-macam itu, itu adalah bagian uh, apa, penting sebetulnya di yang kita lakukan di program studi agama dan lintas budaya atau Center for Religious and Cross Cultural Studies di Universitas Gajah Mada. Kalau Anda berminat, <coughs> di, bisa kunjungi website kita, crcs.ugm.ac.id. Uh, beberapa dari isu-isu semacam ini uh, apa, sering kita um, angkat. Kita bisa lanjutkan lagi percakapan melalui medium itu. Uh, terima kasih banyak um, Dr. Kelly Swayze dan um, Insinyur um, Nirwan Arsuka. <coughs> Um, terima kasih sudah share ini dan juga tentu terima kasih kepada Anda semua yang sudah berbagi pandangan uh, apa, dan menonton ini bersama-sama kita. Oke, okay. selamat malam. Thank you everyone for coming.